All right, so up to this point, we would qualify you and the airplane, meaning we go through all of your credentials, your documents, everything, as well as for the plane. Look yeah. at the maintenance logs for the plane, make sure it's airworthy to even start the check ride. Yeah. Um, after that, examiners would go over your rights as a pilot, mm -hmm. um, Privacy Act, which you would receive, and then go over the three outcomes. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the three outcomes of a check ride? Yes. What are they? Satisfactory. <laughs> uh, discontinuance and unsatisfactory so right. fail pass or we have to do it another day whether right. whatever yeah exactly so a uh, it's kind of like pausing the check ride if mm -hmm. you do um, a discontinuance usually it's things that are out of your control weather maintenance so if you go to do the flight portion and notice that something's not functioning on the plane you can discontinue yeah um, at that point you receive a letter of discontinuance mm -hmm. saying what you've covered so far and then when you go back to continue the test, you would just continue from that point. Got it. Um, so let's start with area, op area of operation one, pre-flight preparation, task A, pilot qualifications. So how old do you need to be to become a private pilot? 17. Yep. And does your certificate expire? No, it is not. I just need to do a flight review and keep up with currency. Yeah, so what does that mean, currency? So within the last 90 days, I just need to have three takeoffs, three landings, mm -hmm. and same for night um, to a full stop. So, and if I do one takeoff on a Tuesday, and then a month later I do another takeoff, and a month later I do another one, then mm -hmm. that still qualifies me. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you complete those at night, does that satisfy the date requirement as well? Yeah. And as far as the flight review, so you mentioned flight review, how often do you need that? Within 24 calendar months. Right. And what does that usually include? So it's one hour of ground and um, an hour of flight with an examiner or an instructor. And yeah. And so as far as the ground, what's usually discussed during that portion? So just basic fundamentals of the plane um, doesn't include a written, just more like an oral. So just, you know, basic systems of the plane or just at the discretion of the instructor. I guess more specifically the ground portion. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at that a little bit more. So I know where to find it. Um, current general operating and flight rules of part 91 of this chapter. Yep. Yeah. So reviewing the operating flight rules, part 91, during the ground portion and then the flight portion, what is usually done during that time. So it could just be review of just maneuvers and procedures just at the discretion of the instructor. For yeah. That one. Yeah, exactly. Um, are there certain things you accomplish so that way you don't need a flight review every 24 calendar months? If you are training for another like rating or if you are taking like a check ride it just resets so you don't need to do it again for another 24 months right so if you successfully pass a practical test yeah um as well as a proficiency program do you know what some of those might be oh you, so if you are part of a like a FAA sponsored proficiency program, like WINGS, then you don't need to take a flight review. Yeah. Okay. So can, speaking on currency, can you accomplish currency in a flight simulator? Yes. Right. If it's FAA approved. If it's FAA approved. All right, so as far as uh, privileges and limitations, what are you allowed to do as a private pilot? So I'm allowed to fly day or night as long as the weather complies. So I can't fly in clouds. I'm not instrument rated. Um, I can fly people like my friends, my family. I can't be paid. Um, I can fly for a charity as long as I'm not paid. And I can show buyers an aircraft as long as I have 200 hours. And I can fly and be paid by a charity as long as I have 500 hours. Right. 
Um, that 500 hours, is that going to be PIC time or total time? Total. So let's say somebody wants to chip in for the flight. Are they allowed to do that? Yes, as long as it's like an even split between us. They can help pay for airport fees, right? Um, fuel, and it's pretty much it. Yeah. So what do we refer to that as? No more than the pro rata. Mm -hmm. So their own half, like or their share. Right. The correct share. Yeah. Yeah. So their share of the flight uh, expenses. Usually it's going to specify fuel, oil, rental fees, mm -hmm. um, not usually including maintenance or, you know, any upkeep of the aircraft. Yeah. So uh, prior to starting, you showed me your medical certificate as a third class medical, mm -hmm. and you're obviously younger than 40. So <laughs> I would hope so. Ac acting as a private pilot, how long is that good for? Uh, 60 calendar months. Right. Um, so that word calendar, what is that referring to? So if, let's say I got my medical on what is it, December? So December 5th, then I would have to just get it at the end of the month. Right. Yeah, yeah so last day of the month, so as long as it's still the month of December. Yeah, then, then I'm good. Then you're fine. So if you were over the age of 40, when would that expire? 24 calendar months. Right. Um, and so what can you do with a third class medical, meaning what privileges are you allowed to do? So I can fly as a private pilot and an instrument pilot, but not commercial or ATP. So what would you need in order to operate as an airline, airline pilot? First class. Right. How about commercial? Second class. Yep. Um, are you allowed to fly as PIC with an expired medical? Yes. Basic med. Right. So what is, what is basic med? What does that mean? So you can, if you've had a prior medical, as long as you have a valid driver's license, um, have gone to do a education course within 24 months and have gotten checked by a doctor in 48 months, then you're eligible for basic med. Yeah. So that physician, does that need to be an aviation medical examiner or can it just be a state licensed physician? State licensed right. doctor. So you can go to your family physician take the medical form with you. Have them fill it out. Right. So what are you allowed to do and what can't you do with basic med? So I can't fly higher than 18,000 feet MSL and can't fly an aircraft that weighs more than 12,500 pounds and I can't fly more than seven passengers. Right. Is that including yourself or without yourself? Including myself. So if you've previously had your medical revoked for whatever medical issue, are you allowed to apply for basic med? No. Right. So how would you describe proficiency and currency? Is proficiency that... is like safety of flight and currency is like the legality of flying. Yeah. yeah. So the way I usually put it is currency is really the, the bare minimum, the legal requirement that you need to do. Mm -hmm. And then proficiency is going to be that highest level of skill yeah really you 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 fly re, you fly often mm -hmm. and you're proficient and your skill levels at the highest is going to be for that given flight um, that can apply to whatever aircraft you're using you're proficient in that plane for those avionics for the performance in that aircraft whatever it may be all right so let's say your friend finds out that you are a pilot brings you a, a piper malibu an older aircraft, mm -hmm. um, asks you to fly it to Vegas for him to get stored over there. So would you, are you allowed to fly that aircraft as pilot command? Well, I believe a Piper Malibu is high performance, right? So technically I wouldn't be able to because I would need to be endorsed in that. And I'm pretty sure it's a complex. So I would need to get endorsed as that, in that as well. So if I were to go and fly that, I would first go get checked out first. So call me back in a, in a week. <laughs> um, so you mentioned high performance and complex endorsements. What are some examples of other endorsements you might need? So tailwheel would be another one, same thing. And then altitude, um, like with a pressurized cabin. So yeah.
Yep. Um, and then, if necessary, a type rating. So mm -hmm. when would a type rating be required? So if the aircraft is over 12,500 in weight, you would then have to go get type rated in that specific make and model and take a practical test, like a check ride, and do groundwork and just like a rating of any kind. Yeah. Um, cool. So that's everything under pilot qualifications. Next we'll do uh, airworthiness.